You can't say that you know this on your own from human experience. Mm-hmm. This is knowledge beyond yourself. So when you say with full confidence, after this half the email about turning this life into heaven for yourself, doing whatever you want, that's heaven, isn't it? Yeah. So turning this life into a, a, a life of pleasure for yourself. And then you argue, well, I'm going to party here, and then when I die, there's more coming. There's more coming. Then you've decided to make a past judgment on something you have no knowledge of. You have no knowledge of this. You know, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal speaks, He says, أَتَقُولُونَ عَنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Are you saying on behalf of God what you have no knowledge of? Are you saying on behalf of Allah what you have no idea about? So the idea that you're okay in the hereafter is almost like a delusion. And actually, in fact, it is a delusion. That I'm doing alright, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with my life. And especially, you know, if you're a, a young person and you think your whole life is ahead of you, how many young people that thought their whole life was ahead of them that were going to party away their life died in a car accident? <laughs> that died on their way to the club. That never got a chance to live out their entire life that, that, the way they had planned. And so their false hopes, your false aspirations, you think these things are going to bring you happiness? You know why you keep going back to the club and you keep going back to these desires? Because you never find satisfaction. You're never satisfied. You're never going to be fulfilled. You're never going to be content. What we are offering in Islam, what we have found in Islam for ourselves, is a means by which our hearts are at peace. They're at rest. They're not discontent. We are pleased with what we have. And I promise you, you know, in one of the most beautiful things in Islam is finding your soulmate. That's mm-hmm. one of the most beautiful gifts in Islam. You, you yeah, argue, that's one of the things. So you right, can't, that's you can't why meet I'm, your soulmate. You can't meet your soulmate. You see, what is a soulmate? It's not just about physical desires, physical pleasures. I'm sure you and other people you know have had the experience of thinking they found their soulmate, getting used, getting abused, getting manipulated like a you know like like a toy, and then being thrown off being you know, uh, disregarded. And people like that, you know when, when somebody uses you like that, and somebody takes advantage of you like that, you lose respect for yourself, and you lose respect for others. So the next time around, you're going to do it to someone else, and you're not going to feel so bad about it either. Because you've lost a little bit of your humanity every single time. What Islam is saying is so powerful. We treat our, our women with the utmost respect. Our Messenger told us, وسلم, the best of you are the ones who are best to their spouses, and I'm the best to mine. You know, so he teaches us to be the most merciful, kind, and lenient towards our spouses. And really, I, mean, I don't want to talk about the reality of spousal abuse in the world, which happens in the Muslim world and it happens in the non Muslim world. I'm not saying Muslims are not guilty of spousal abuse. That, they are. That's the defect in that individual. Yes, this is not to speak anything of Islam. And actually they violated some very basic principles of Islam if they're engaged in abusing their spouse. This is one, one of the most uh, uh, prized you know, responsibilities. One of the highest responsibilities a man has in this life as a Muslim is taking care of his wife. This is one of the things he's going to be interrogated about in front of Allah. How did you deal with her? Were you kind to her? Did you take care of her? Did you protect her? Did you honor her? Did you teach her? Etc. Etc. These are the things that you know, Muslim men are supposed to take very, very seriously. But the bottom line isn't even this issue. The bottom line is, forget men. This religion is not about men versus women. That's not the issue. The issue is you and your Lord. You and your provider. He gave you all of these things to enjoy and He's asking you. You can be deluded by these things, you could be you know, dissuaded by these things, or you can have eternal pleasure, eternal life. Something, a pleasure far beyond what, what these few things that you're obsessed with can ever help you with. You know, you're going to get drunk, and you're going to throw up, and you're going to have a hangover. You're going to go to the club, you're going to wake up somewhere, you don't even know what happened to you the night before. You're going to do these things thinking it's going to bring you pleasure, and it's going to end up causing you, if it hasn't already, a lot of pain. You think you're happy, you're kidding yourself. You really are. So that uh, those two next, we covered the soulmate and many things before that, and the clubbing. You know, come on, club. You know, the clubbing and the occasional drink. So is is this really where the happiness is? You know, going from club, club Friday to Friday. It's like I live and work. You know, throughout the week to make enough money to enjoy my Friday yeah. or my Saturday. Sure. And then I get to talk about it Monday with all the friends, and then we look forward to doing it again next Friday. So it goes from fr- Friday to Friday. Your whole life is just a week. Your whole life is just a repeat cycle of that entire week. That's all it is. That's all your purpose amounts to. And really, I say, why do people love alcohol so much? You know, this is my personal take on it. This may or may not be true. Yeah. It's an escape from reality. It why is. do people get into drugs? Yeah. It's an escape from reality. Your life is so bad. You've got so many problems. 
You got nothing to look forward to in your life. Uh, the only thing you have to look forward to is that time where you will jump around like a, a wild animal, drink something to lose touch with your problems, your reality, your own purpose. Right? So from weekend to weekend, you're just looking to get high or you know, get away from this world, this, the, the reality around you. You don't want to take responsibility for why you were put on this earth. That's what it is. You're trying to run away from it. You're trying to escape it. You know, you know, even if you're trying to find pleasure, if you're trying to find you know, physical pleasure, if you're trying to find monetary benefit. You know people who run after money their entire life, they're still not happy. They still don't find happiness. They'll buy this big old mansion that they thought they would love, and after a couple of months of living in that mansion, they'll find somebody else's mansion that's nicer. And say, man, I don't have that, and there's a void in their heart. Mm -hmm. It's never going to be fulfilled. Your greed, your lust, it's never going to be fulfilled. Faith, real faith, true faith, offers something that nothing else can offer. It can fill your heart with contentment. That's what we're offering. So you have to fight your desires. You have to, for a moment, maybe for a day, for a week, we ask you just to put your desires aside, just put them aside for a little while and just deeply reflect on the truth. Reflect on your real purpose in life and see if that can push you in a different direction. There were people like, much like you that were in a life of, of really entertaining themselves, drowning themselves in, in, in all of their seductions and Allah gifted them with just a, a possibility, or just a few moments of taking a seat back, pulling themselves out of that cycle and thinking about it for a moment. And they found the truth. And they are now, they are at more peace now than they were ever before. Why is it do you think that a young man, a young Muslim man, a young Muslim woman, you know, good looking, healthy, smart, you know, making good money, etc., etc., is not going to go to the club? He has all the power to. Uh -huh. What's stopping him? What is so powerful that it's, it's not tempting him like it tempts you? Why is it that he's able to fight that? He's got something so powerful that nobody else can see. And we want to share that treasure with you. We want to share that, that's, yeah. that's what we want you to experience. Uh, you know, a lot of us, we, uh, some of us are just coming over from what we call jahiliyyah, coming over from the days of ignorance. Some people, you know, they can relate to this and they're laughing at it now because they have that true peace and that contentment. They don't have to go to the club. They don't have to go chasing the material world. But why do you think it is that someone... You know, we've seen this, you know, the woman, she, because the next point she mentions is, you know, women in your religion, uh, they got to cover from head to toe. But you'll see women just fighting so hard. It's like freezing outside and she's got, you know, the, the skirt coming up and you're like, man, ain't you cold? She's just fighting, but now the cold weather will still have to have her put on some kind of, some clothes. Yeah. Or she'll have to give out... You know, the number, the guys are out there, you know what their agenda is. They, yeah. they want to satisfy their desires. The woman, she feels insecure if she's not giving, at least if her phone's not blowing up and 20 guys are calling her a day. She's got to have this, this uh, feeding to her ego and it becomes like a game. It yeah. becomes like, you know, this life we're just playing with each other. And it's really uh, what a lot of times uh, our sisters don't realize in humanity is that they're actually being used. They think they're dressing how they want. You don't want that. You just want, you're just uh, appealing to the desires of men. That's what they want. It's not what you want. They want it more than you do. They want you to dress half naked. You know, and so the, the, the thing about hijab and covering and modesty and things like that, first and foremost, it's a commandment in Islam. Well, uh, the Muslim woman covers, she, she covers herself in a certain way. Why? Because she is convinced this is a commandment, a prescription from her Lord, and what her Lord says is better for her in her fulfilling her purpose. Uh -huh. that's, the, that's the essential point of this issue. But just to speak about clothing a little bit, you know there are, uh, in Islam we say that there are three purposes of uh, clothing. There are three purposes of clothing. Uh, one purpose of clothing is protecting yourself from the elements of the weather, uh -huh. like you just mentioned. Another purpose of clothing is beautification. Another purpose of clothing is modesty. There are three purposes. Protection, Beautification and modesty. But the priority is different. In Islam, the priority first is what? Modesty. That's the first priority. You have to have decency. You have to have, you know, uh, you shouldn't be uh, uh, objectified, you know. So that's the first purpose. The second purpose in, uh, of clothing in Islam, of course, is protection from the weather and, and together with beautification. There's nothing wrong with wearing nice, clo nice clothes, so long as you are guarding your modesty, right? What happens in a lot of non-Muslim culture is that a lot of times people don't care about modesty at all. They don't even care sometimes about 
protecting themselves from the weather, like you said. Yeah. What are they concerned about? What they think is beautification. Yeah. That's what they're concerned. She's got. She don't.